Hello everyone, this is Dove again. So as some of you might have already seen, I made a video where I tested my new Dokio 300 solar watt panel on my Energy Apex over here. And I actually forgot to show you what came in the box. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. And so this is my 300 watt panel this is the box it came in, and this is exactly how it came. It was damaged and it was open. I was actually worried that there would be something wrong with it because it literally came open. I added some pictures to the end of my testing video that, that um, show that, but you can see it here, it's damaged all the way around and all the way down to here and it was in styrofoam thankfully because that's the only thing that saved it so this is exactly how it came I was really disappointed but I pulled it out and it comes in here and so the other side I, I cut the tape on and I slid it out of this styrofoam thing. I mean it is really really thin and it's the size of the, the box obviously but look at look at that. I mean you can't <laughs> there's hardly any protection so yeah I was really worried but it works and it works fine. I just wanted to show you that you know sometimes that's the kind of shipping you get. It's not exactly what you want but it's okay and everything. Um, the only thing that really bothered me was that the solar controller and the, um, the bag of cables that came with, it was literally just like they had a piece of this uh, clear shipping tape. So they had the bag there and then they just had a strap of tape over it. And then on the other side they had the controller box with a piece of tape over it. And so with it being open, I'm, you know, I'm glad they taped it onto the, to the styrofoam here because they would have just completely fallen out because uh, I mean who knows at what point the box came open during shipping so but it was okay and so here's the panel again this is the flap or the pocket it's got a flap on it with velcro this is the cable I have to use um, for my energy apex because it's a special it's a special end the panel uses SAE right here that's SAE and that's what the panel uses but my energy apex has an EC8 connection I don't know if you can see that very well or not it's kind of flat on that side and that's what goes into the apex and so I had to get adapter cables I had already planned I was going to actually use my Renogy 100 watt panel and so I got an EC8 to MC4 uh, cable because the Ranagy uses MC4. But now that I'm using the Dokio here, I have to go to SAE. So I had to get another cable. And then the polarity wasn't right. And so the, the people that sent this cable also sent this adapter just in case you need to switch the polarities. And we checked the panel and everything with our voltmeter and we did have to switch it. So I've got this little adapter on there. So that's how I hook it up to the apex, but that's not what came with it. This is what came with it. These are the cables they sent. It was in this bag here with this little tag. And so you've got, this is Anderson connection, and that's what goes to the controller. This is the controller they sent. There's the instructions, and that's the box it came in. And it doesn't say anywhere on the box or on the controller where it was made. And it doesn't say anywhere on the panel where it was made. So I have no idea where it was made. <laughs> so don't ask me that question. Because if you look at the instructions, sometimes they have a foreign language. And that is usually sometimes where it comes from. But I don't know if you can see that or not. This is Russian. And I'm pretty sure this panel and this controller was not made in Russia. 
but that's Russian. Now this manual is horrible. It's got the worst typos ever. Like there was nobody editing this thing. There is a typo every other sentence. So just be aware that it's kind of hard to understand sometimes and it's really not comprehensive. Um, I don't know if you need to see that information. You can pause it there and read it if you need to. If I quit shaking, sorry about that. So yeah, anyways, the manual is really, really dodgy. And the other thing is, um, it tells you here the order to connect it. Let me see if I can get this in frame for you. Sorry. So it says to connect the battery to the controller and then the solar panel to the controller and then whatever uh, whatever you want to use it on. They call it a, a, what do they call it? Connect the consumer to the charge regulator. I mean, their English is really, really bad. And so, <coughs> excuse me, this is where you connect the solar panel. Like I said, this is the cable they gave you. This is an Anderson connection. And then that's the SAE that goes to the panel. And this, I measured, it was nine and a half feet for that cable. So it's a pretty long cable that goes from the controller to here. And then this is the cable they give you another Anderson with the alligator clips so that you can connect it to your battery. And the battery goes there. And then this is where you would connect, like, if you had a, a device that ran on one of these barrel plugs, that's what you would do for your output. And they give you little adapters for the end so you can make it different millimeters. I don't need any of these. I don't need that and I don't need that. I did test this out the other day because I had a, a viewer who asked if um, the panels could be like bent, folded up underneath themselves so that it wouldn't be a smaller footprint because when this is all folded out there's four panels here so this is times four so it's actually quite big and so he or she was wanting to know if the one of them could be folded back on itself and that is the answer to that is yes and so I did test that and I'll add some footage at the end and some pictures and I actually didn't think it was possible but it is and I'll show you how later but getting back to this controller it does work I charged my phone with it that's what he wanted to know because you can see right here it says that the you can use the controller without a battery if you want to use something if you want to charge via USB there's two USB ports here and so at first I tested it with my USB fan because I just didn't want to blow up my phone <laughs> and so I put the panel out in the sun and I connected it with this cable and there was no battery and it lit up and it was running you know I, I was I was under shady conditions sometimes it was going in and out of the sun but it wasn't going any lower than 13.6 and it went up to I think 14.7 and so I'll show, you'll be able to see that in the pictures at the end. But it fluctuated, like almost the whole time, it was fluctuating the voltage or the amps. I can't remember which one it was displaying. Um, but, uh, sorry, what was I going to say? I'm sorry, I'm hot. I had to turn off my fans. So I did try it, and it ran my fan. And then once I was confident that that was okay, I did plug my phone into it. And it was down to 75% charge. And again, I had to keep moving the panel. You'll see that in the pictures. It's, I just have to keep moving it throughout the yard because of all the trees and everything in the way. And so it did charge it in about an hour, hour and a half. And every time that the charge went lower than 13.6, this whole thing just shut off. So it was just like that. There were no numbers being displayed at all. And at that point, I was a little worried about my phone, but it's okay. It, it didn't hurt it or anything. So, you know, you can do it. You can charge your phone just using this controller and the panel. And 
some Velcro. Like I said, there's four panels all together. This one flips out. You can see my other video to see it full size. And what I didn't show you in the other video was this is the cable, the SAE cable. And these are the fronts of the panels. You can see them right there. And so you may not want your cable to be up out here. And so they have this little tiny pocket there. You see that? And you just stick the, uh, I can't do it one handed. It's, it's really very tight in there. But you just stick this cable back down in that little hole and it'll come out the back side. And so that doesn't have to be in the way. And see, you can see by the construction, each panel is separate. And so it was a good question that this person asked because I really had not thought about doing that to make the footprint smaller. But if you do that, now you've got three panels instead of four. And so it does take up less space and you can still charge your phone with it. Even when only two panels are um, exposed to the sun, it still gives enough voltage and enough solar gain that you can plug in your solar controller and you can run a fan, you can charge your phone or whatever. And then again, you'll see in the other pictures that are in the pictures in the end that you can fold it back up under itself. And so this whole thing would be folded back up under itself. And so that at point, you only have two panels, uh, the footprint of two panels. And so I had it outside leaning up against uh, my garden bed and then I had to move it out into the yard and I had a box up underneath it and everything. And at some point it was at, I think 98% charged and I just could not get any more solar gain. So I didn't get it charged all the way, but it was good enough. And so I think that's it. That's what all came in the box. Oh, 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 I keep forgetting. See on the, on the Amazon um, page, when you go to order it, there is a video that they show you and it comes from Dokyo. It says Dokyo up in the, up in the corner of the video and it shows you how to connect all of this. And it says quite clearly that you should connect your solar panel first and then your battery. And then, you know, they, they had a separate inverter. So they, they went from that to that, to the battery. And then from the battery that had a cable going to an inverter. And so, you know, you can use it that way and everything, but I already have a battery, so I don't need the solar controller. But right here, you can see it says connect the battery first and then the solar panel. And it even says over here, let's see if I can get that focused. There you go. The reverse order applies when deinstalling. An improper sequence order can damage the controller. So these people, and right here, they're telling me to hook up the battery first and then the solar panel. And if I don't do that, it could, you know, fail. But in that video, it quite clearly shows this lady plugging into the solar panel first, then she plugged the cable into the battery and hooked the alligator clips up to the battery. So I don't know which one to believe. I don't know what to tell you because I'm getting conflicting uh, instructions. And if if you can blow up this thing, if you do it wrong, that's kind of, that's kind of shoddy that their video tells you one way and the instruction manual tells you the total opposite. So just keep that in mind. I haven't blown it up yet, <laughs> but again, I don't actually plan on ever using this. This will probably just get tucked away. Like if something were to happen to um, my apex or my Jackery, which I'm getting in about a week or two then yeah, I mean, if I was desperate, I could charge my phone or run a fan or something just straight through this without needing a battery. But other than that, I probably won't ever use it. All right, guys, I think that was it. I will talk to you later. Hold on, some hold on to see some photos at the end and maybe 
a short video clip. We'll see how long it takes. Bye.